Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, a wild HOA Karen refused firefighters access to the neighborhood in order to see my house burn down. This homeowner association is absolutely out of control. For anybody here thinking that Karens only exist in the United States, you are dead wrong. Here in South America they exist and might even be more ruthless than their white counterparts. The biggest Karen I ever knew was the woman who ran our HOA. She controlled the place like she was some general in the army, wanting everything to be perfect. I don't think a single resident has not gotten into an argument with her about the rules she was trying to enforce. I don't mean normal either, she was on the next level with how she wanted things to run. I saw my neighbor get chewed out for not bringing in his mail within the same hour it was delivered. She was on a clear power trip and nobody was standing up to her. I knew if nothing big happened like it did, I would have stayed quiet like everybody else. One year we had a really bad heat wave and there were warnings of forest fires. We lived pretty close to some wooded area so all of us were on edge worrying that something bad could happen but hoping it wouldn't. Karen refused to have the HOA come up with an emergency plan either because she was so sure that nothing was gonna happen. Well unfortunately it did and a wild fire broke out near us and was spreading towards the homes fast. Now, I know the term wildfire makes people think of those crazy huge forest fires that take weeks or even months to be put out, this was a much smaller scale and could be put out before it reached and destroyed any homes. The firefighters were called and coming to help protect everybody. However, Karen decided her stupid strict rules were more important. There was only one road into the neighborhood and Karen was blocking the firefighters from getting in. Her own large car blocking the path so nobody could go in or out of the neighborhood. People were crowding around and watching as she just stopped the trucks from moving in and was yelling at the people trying to save us that they were not allowed in. That only HOA approved vehicles could come in or out of the neighborhood. I, along with several others, were yelling and pleading for her to stop this nonsense and let them just get through. Karen just refused and kept repeating that it was against the rules. That they could go in but their trucks had to stay outside of the HOA lines. Like, lady, your house is in danger too, what the hell is going on? Now, the firefighters have the right to force their way in but with Karen using her own body, they were kind of stuck there. None of them wanted to get involved in the mess that would happen if they just ran her over with the truck. The fire was spreading and getting closer to the homes. I tried once more to reason with Karen before I got an idea. Me, just let them in, there won't be a neighborhood if they cannot stop the fire. Karen said, no, my rules stand, I turned my attention to the fighters. Me, the fences over here by our properties are small, you can go over those to get to the fire. So they moved their trucks away from Karen and went off road to knock down our fences and get to the fire. However, at that point it was too late and the fire had spread and destroyed at least two dozen homes. They are putting it out and Karen shows up again screaming that they are all going to jail and breaking the law by going against her. You might wonder where the rest of the HOA board was and well, they were there too and actually helping Karen. Agreeing that she was right and that they needed to stop putting out the fire and move their trucks. The entire place is full of smoke by now and the sounds of people sobbing over their homes needlessly being destroyed. I don't know if it was Karen or the firefighters that called the police, but they came onto the scene once the fire was controlled and it was chaos. They were demanding to know why the main road was blocked and Karen flat out said that she had to block it. That the HOA by law stated who and what kind of trucks could come into the area. They started yelling at Karen and telling her that she could have killed people and been arrested for murder if anybody had died. Karen was then arrested for endangering everybody's lives and not complying with emergency services. I went and saw that my house was totally destroyed. Nothing salvageable at all. I talked to the others in the same situation as me and we decided to file a lawsuit against Karen and the HOA. We wanted the money to fix our home since Karen was the reason the fire was not able to be put out before it did the damage. We were able to get a large sum of money as the HOA board was a little more concerned about the charges that could send them to jail. They were all arrested and charged but Karen more than any of the others. They wanted to send her to jail for obstructing the firefighters and negligence. Digging more into her they found a secret that explained everything. During a search of her they found a conversation she had with her friend in development. 
I obviously did not get to see it, but considering what she got found guilty for, I can just guess. She was found guilty of starting the fire herself, it was not the heatwave that caused any of this. She drove out and started the fire, before driving back and blocking the road. She wanted the entire place to burn down, and that was why she was making it impossible for them to get in and put it out. Thankfully, her friend also got arrested for conspiracy and she was a known land developer. Karen wanted to scam insurance money and then partner with her friend to develop the land and sell it for a ton of money. She never cared about the people living on the land, she just liked having power and when she saw an opportunity to become rich, she took it without caring who got hurt in the process. I said before that she didn't get charged for anybody dying before, that changed as time went on. Some residents had to go to the hospital and a few of them did not end up making it. She was responsible for their deaths even more since she started the fire adding arson and manslaughter onto her list of charges. She was sentenced to a minimum of 10 years in prison before she would even be eligible for parole. I cannot see her getting out early for good behavior based on her personality though. The money I got was enough to fix my home back up. There's no HOA anymore here, but even after all these years it's like we have a bad taste in our mouth. The community is strong and healthy though, but we will never be able to scrub the memory of Karen out of our heads. The craziest woman I've ever come across and I pray that I never see her again. And here ripe stars, if you still enjoy the HOA stories, please don't forget to like the video and maybe even leave a comment because that would help me tremendously. Thank you so much and the next one is titled When the food is too spicy. So I used to be a chef in a Mexican restaurant in a small town in Australia nearly 40 years ago. We were modestly popular and I loved working there. One night a young man came in to dine with a young lady. It was very obviously a first date, they ordered a nachos to share with a side of jalapenos for their entree and he ordered a steak Veracruz hot for his main and the young lady ordered a chicken burrito mild for hers. I, as I usually did throughout the night, would walk around the tables and ask if people were enjoying the food. After the nachos I checked on them and the young man informed me that the chili that accompanied the nachos were not hot at all and that he loved hot food. I was informed that he had traveled extensively and had eaten some of the hottest food in the world and that no one had ever made a dish too hot for him. He reiterated that he wanted his steak main extra hot. To be honest I found him to be pompous and rather obnoxious in the way he was speaking down to me and found myself taking a disliking to him. I will at this point add that the young lady was looking a little uncomfortable and I got the impression that her date was not going as she had expected. I headed to the kitchen and I made her a lovely chicken burrito while putting together his steak. He wanted it hot? Well he was gonna get it. Our steak Veracruz was usually a steak cooked and topped with our house tomato sauce base with some capsicums, bell peppers for you Americans and onions with a touch of chili. On this occasion I set to work, keep in mind this was Australia back in the 80s and we did not get a lot of different chilies back then and a jalapeno was considered hot by most Aussie palates. Hey, we were an uneducated bunch. I had a few bird's eye chilies in the kitchen that were mainly there for the staff and the resident Mexican guitarist meals so I started with those. And by the way ripe stars, just to quickly interject, actually bird's eye chilies are some of my favorite chilies to be honest. Sometimes with some meals, especially Burmese food, I really like to eat them as a snack. They taste really good, honestly. Anyway, I finally diced about 10 of those with their seeds and I then started sweating off my onions and capsicums. I then threw in the chilies and then I added about a tablespoon of chili powder and about a tablespoon of cayenne. I soon felt the fumes hit my nose and the back of my throat and my eyes started watering. I ran to the door of the kitchen to get a breath of breathable air as the air in my tiny kitchen was rapidly becoming unbreathable. I ran back to my pan and put a ladle of the house tomato sauce in. I then let that simmer for a few minutes and I then added some chopped up jalapenos from a jar in my fridge and thought why not and in went a bit more chili powder. I then put the flash fried steak in to finish it off in the sauce. I served it all up on a plate with some rice, served up the chicken burrito and hit the bell for the waitress to serve it to the table. The waitress came back and told me that as she placed it in front of him, he said this had better be hot. She assured him the chef had done as he requested, I went to the door of the kitchen, joined by my waitress to watch the show unfold and unfold it did. I watched with glee as he sliced the steak, took a piece on his fork and with a smug look on his face he put it in his mouth. He took a chew and then realized his 
his mistake. I saw it. That moment when his face changed, but he was trying so hard not to show it. He couldn't though. He was on a date and he had bragged so hard and now he had to go through with it. He ate the steak and I could see every ounce of pain on his face. He struggled and he struggled hard. His date watched him with a slight smile on her lips and I got the impression that she was thoroughly enjoying his pain. He went through several jugs of water, he sweated, he barely spoke. He looked damn uncomfortable. At the end of the meal, I came out of the kitchen and asked him if he had enjoyed his meal. His words? Could have been hotter. He never came back though. His date? She became a regular and told us that he was an insufferable fool and she never saw him again. I have no regrets other than I wish Carolina Reapers had been around then. And the next one is an Am I the A-hole story. I, 42 female, am one of five children and my father died when we were very young, leaving my mom and my four siblings. My parents had collected a lot of cool things over the years. When my mom downsized to a condo, after all the kids had left home, she got rid of a lot of items that she no longer had room for. We all had things that we were sentimental about and as one of the younger siblings, I did not request anything, although I had strong connections to a few items. After everyone had decided on what they wanted, I wound up with three things that were of little to no financial value, but I treasure them for the memories they represent. The first item is a tractor seat that is bolted to a butcher block to make a funky chair. The second item is a 1970s tacky spice cabinet and the third thing is a set of stoneware pastry bowls that my mom had saved green stamps to buy. Over the years my siblings have sold, destroyed or lost the items that they got. And now when they come to my house they often comment on the things I have. I didn't know you got those, I've always wanted that, etc. My mom even told my sister behind my back that she could have tractor seat chair that I had because I was not really using it. My mom saw that I had it in the garage because I was protecting it from the weather and it needed sanding. For other reasons, I've gone no contact with this sister. Well, she texted me out of the blue to ask if she could have the chair. I told her it was sentimental for me and I would prefer to keep it. She tried to guilt trip me about how she didn't have anything left from our parents. I didn't reply though, conversation over. I also knew that if she had it, it would likely be ruined since she is a bit of a hoarder and doesn't take care of things. She has let a flooding basement go on unresolved for years and her entire house smells like mildew. It's so bad that I can smell it on her whenever I'm around her. She refuses to acknowledge that there's a problem. Shortly after the text exchange, my mom came to house sit for one night and I hit the chair in question because I was worried that she was gonna have my sister come over and grab it or take it for her and then again recently my mom asked me if she could have the spice rack to give to my sister. I said that I was using it which is true. So we will be hosting Christmas this year and I plan to hide the bolts, the chair and the spice rack while my family is visiting. I'm starting to feel like I don't really want anything to do with my family at all, including the heirlooms. I'm not someone who's generally attached to things, especially when it starts to affect a relationship, but I feel on principle this is about more than the heirlooms and more about boundaries. I feel bad about hiding things, but am I the a-hole here? Common number one, not the a-hole but your mom and not your sister is the biggest a-hole here. Your mom is literally trying to take your things and give them to your sister. Just hide your spice, hide your chair and hide your bowls. Common number two, not the a-hole but your family is weird. Does your mom always favor this sister over you? That is all I'm hearing here is that sister gets whatever she wants even if your mom has to take it from someone else for her to have it. That's just rude. And here ripe stars, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Is OP the a-hole here or not? And the next one is titled Ultimate Job Revenge. Several years ago when he was in college, Chris worked as a lifeguard at a water park in Cincinnati. After about a year, his bosses promoted him to a managerial role and promised him a raise. His new duties were more than just keeping an eye on the water. Chris managed the daily schedule for all lifeguards and tested the water's chemical levels. Each morning when he opened the park, he would be the first one down its water slides, testing them for safety. More than six months into his new position, Chris's paycheck remained the same, $8 an hour instead of the 10 he was promised. Week after week I would ask about it, he says, and management would keep making excuses. And then came a corporate announcement. 
Tris's manager said they would cut employees' pay by 10% due to financial difficulties. Chris felt slighted. Now, his pay was way less than what he started out earning, despite his managerial duties. I decided, okay, if they really don't care about me and they don't value me and what I do for the water park, then maybe I will just stop doing it. He says. So, on a busy summer day, Chris did not show up to open the park. He let the flood of subsequent texts and voicemails from his managers go unanswered. No one else with his level of training was able to come in that morning. I ultimately caused a shutdown of the water park for that Friday, Chris says. He estimates he cost the park between $15,000 and $20,000 in customer review for what would have been a yearly raise of a few thousand dollars. And by the way, Ripe Stars, I don't know, maybe it is just me, but I would have never guessed that a water park can make that much in revenue. But then again, we don't really know how big the park is. So anyway, soon after he ghosted, Chris landed a job making more money as a pizza delivery driver. He now works for a Fortune 500 company. And the next one is titled, Never Cheat on Me. So I met a guy while vacationing in California one summer, really nice guy, and he always wanted to do something fun and different every day. From hiking, paintballing, swimming or going out on the ocean. After the vacation ended, we kept in touch and over the course of the next year, we decided I would move to California. I work in healthcare as a nurse, so getting a job almost anywhere is not tough. Just as a new nurse, your hours are gonna be crappy. No surprise. So after we live together for a few months and my hours being terrible, they go back to normal hours and we can really spend more time together. I'm not really one to snoop around and he had a safe in the bedroom where we kept basic stuff like passport, SS cards, birth certificates, etc. One day I had to produce my birth certificate and had to go into the safe while he was not home. I found my birth certificate easily, but next to it was a birth certificate with an entirely different name and DOB than what was his, so I asked him about it and he got super defensive and yelled at me for snooping. Totally out of character for him, as I've never seen him yell before. I still wanted to know what the hell and based on his reaction and the fact that I moved to a different state to be with him, I deserve to know if he was hiding anything. A few days later, he finally tells me the truth. He used to be married and had twins. This caught me off guard, to be honest, because normally you tell someone if you're in a relationship with if you have kids. That does not bother me as much as him using a different name than what his real name is. So then he decides this is the time to be totally honest with me and he tells me he didn't want to pay child support or alimony because she was cheating on him, but he could not prove it in court and he believed the kids were not actually his. Even even though he also admitted that they did a paternity test and he is the father. So he simply started using his old friend's name and information that he for some reason had after they were college roommates. So many red flags are now flying, why did he have his roommate's birth certificate and social? He never did answer that and googling the name never did anything turn up. Then he decided to admit that he's been cheating on me ever since I moved out here since we are being honest and he finally could share his life with someone. What the hell? So then I moved out that very night to sleep on another nurse's couch. He however refused to leave me alone and eventually started to threaten me over the phone. Big mistake, you just admitted to skipping out on child support, alimony, court orders and identity theft. I then started looking up his hometown and state, one thing he didn't seem to lie about, and found public records of his divorce and tracked down his ex-wife on Facebook. After she finally responded about a week later, she confirmed from pictures that it was him and was really interested in knowing where he was. It turns out he not only skipped out on child support and alimony, but he also stole her car years ago when he left and opened several credit cards in her name before he decided to leave town and was wanted for all of that. I mildly kept in touch with him, telling him I needed the time to figure it all out before we could try again. About two months later he was arrested and began proceedings to get him transported back to his home state. He did call me from jail for about a week, but I refused to pay for the calls. He then had his attorney contact me and I told his attorney that if he ever contacted me again, I would call the cops for harassment. I then started searching his name and everything through his home state's court exercise and found out he was sentenced to 6 years for the credit cards, motor vehicle theft, theft of a firearm and several contempt of court charges. 
I kept in contact with the ex-wife for a bit, she was thankful that they finally found him. Also, for a bit more juicy info on top of it, it turns out that once he gets out of prison in his home state, he will be arrested and charged for the stuff that they uncovered and figured out in California over the past few years. It turns out he also did a good amount of credit card fraud out there. So don't threaten to smash someone's face in for breaking up with you if you are committing identity theft and are on the run from child support. And with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.